Well, hello there. My name is Ed Romero, and this is the Out of Office Chat, where I talk about life outside the office. And today, I want to chat about getting down with the sickness, whose line is it anyway, and revisiting MCU. Last time we chatted was at the beginning of the month, which is great because I wanted to make this a little bit more frequently, uh, a little bit more frequent. Now, today, I just want to talk about, talk about what's been going on in my life. Um, and the first segment here is getting down with the sickness. You know, all three of us here in our home, we've all been sick. We've all had coughs, including our little one uh, that have been persisting for the last couple of weeks. Uh, in regards to our little one, we found out that he had walking pneumonia. Now, the difference between walking pneumonia and regular old pneumonia is that uh, you don't get the the fevers and, and and whatnot. I guess you don't need any medication or be uh, you know you don't have to be hospitalized if you have walking pneumonia. Still, uh, you know what bothered him a lot was the the cough. So he got really irritated by the cough. He would wake up in the middle of the night just coughing, and, and you know we got some uh, some medicine for him. We got him some uh, albuterol, which is a, a tena, which is an inhaler, and then uh, we got him on um, some antibiotics. So he's been he's actually been pretty darn good for the last couple of weeks. Now, my wife and I, uh, we both have persisting coughs and we went to go check it out last week just to be safe. You know, I thought we thought, you know, we thought it was maybe something else. We thought maybe it was COVID, maybe something else that we pass on to each other. Now, I'm not a doctor, uh, nor do I know uh, if walking pneumonia is super contagious to adults. But when we went to the doctor, it turns out we both had acute bronchitis. So my wife and I were... Uh, uh, we're very cute. Uh, we, we both have the same illness and, um, you know, with it, it just comes with coughing. And on my end, I had an ear infection. I had, uh, <laughs> so it's been, it's been a little bit, uh, of a, of an interesting couple of weeks. I haven't been able to properly read in the evenings. I haven't been able to uh, just kind of enjoy myself 100% uh, based on the kind of like the, the bronchitis coughing. You know, it's and I have an inhaler, inhaler as well. So I have this bad boy. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think you can hear it. Yeah, there you go. Um, and that helps me to breathe. The other day I had like a, a coughing attack, so it helped me to breathe. Actually, you can hear it. I'm going to take, take a puff right now. That's some good stuff. That is some good albuterol. Um, and you know what that does is it helps kind of clear up my, I have no idea, lungs, I have no idea. Um, but it helps me breathe and a little bit better. It helps kind of, uh, push down the cough. So, uh, you know, I've been doing that and I've been kind of going through that. Uh, my wife and I and our little one, thankfully our, our little one has, has been a little bit better. Now with, with the coughs, unfortunately what that does is it interrupts our sleep. It interrupts our, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, we'll just start coughing and then we'll wake up and I've had to go, uh, we've had to kind of like split rooms so that, you know, my wife's cough doesn't disturb me and vice versa. Uh, and with that, it's disrupted my dreaming, you know? Um, if you listen to my last episode about, about the out-of-body experience, uh, that's kind of like been, uh, uh, not derailed, but disrupted. It's a little harder to kind of focus in on, uh, out-of-body experiences, but, uh, coincidentally, the moments that I do get to focus in on that when I'm, you know, sick, uh, I do have some very vivid dreams. It's it's pretty interesting. So so if you're gonna take any piece of advice, just continue trying to to relax and you know lucid, not lucid, but get your out of body experience going. You'll get some good dreams out of it. Um, so we've all been kind of a little sick. Um, it's not it's not terrible. You know, I I think apart from the cough, it's a it's a wet cough. It's it's been it's been all right. I think I think it I, I can do without. The next item on the list here is whose line is it anyway? So this segment I didn't share with y'all last time because um, I dedicated the entire episode to a uh, a book. But I you know when when I recorded that episode, I was already in like maybe a week or two into my improv classes. Uh, so I'm taking improv classes and uh, I wrote it off uh, just because I think it's really good for uh, for business, um, just being on your toes and being improvising uh, certain business conversations. So um, <laughs> that was a tax write-off. Um, but apart from that, I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's a, so it's it's something I've been wanting to do for such a long time. I really wanted to do some sort of comedic class, uh, and although improv class isn't necessarily comedic, um, 
it is it does help you think on your feet. Now, it's not really, um, you know, you know. I think when we think about improv, we always think about yes and correct. You know, it's it's always yes, this is what you've told me, and let me add on to it. And, and it's true at its core, at the highest level. Improv is about yes and, but there are just so many rules that get in, you know, that are, that are part of improv that it's just so much more than yes and. I think it's, it's, for example, um, there are certain methodologies of thought, you know, it's about giving gifts and what a gift is, is you basically give your partner or whomever you're doing improv with, um, more of a reality. You're contributing to the reality. On top of that, you're not supposed to ask questions, which is really darn hard because the goal of it is you should not be asking questions. You should be building out the reality yourself. Um, so when I start, uh, uh, I guess a, a scene is, is a good way to put it. When I start an improv scene, my first goal should be, let me contribute as much information as I can about the scene without, you know, I guess being too in depth. So I can be like, I'm so and so, and I'm, you know, glad that we're doing so and so, you know, or something like that. And then the partner should add on to that scene, uh, in whatever way they see deem fit. But the goal isn't to ask questions. You add on to the reality. You don't physically depict, um, no, well, not even physically. You can be physical. But let's say you're you're fixing a car and you're like, oh, I'm so glad I got a chance to fix this car to, you know, do, 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 whatever. Uh, it can be more like, hey, can you pass me that uh, wrench over there? I'm just trying to get this lug nut out, uh, out of the hood or out of the whatever uh, motor. So something like that, you know, you, you don't want to be explicit. You kind of want to like build a, a world and reality, which is pretty darn cool. Um I think it's extraordinarily difficult because as adults, myself as as well, I'm a consultant. So one of the first things I do when I talk to a new client is I ask a whole bunch of questions, you know, just to get enough information. But you're not supposed to do that. You know, you're supposed to build it and then go off of it and then use it as a gift and then build more and more and more around it. Uh, I mean... Regardless, I, uh, I'm having a ton of fun. Uh, we're having, uh, we're actually performing in two shows, uh, which should be a lot of fun. I think, I don't know if, if y'all heard that, but there was like a little weird beep. Um, but we're having like two shows where we have 15 minute segments. It should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm reading another book, uh, that is around improv classes. It's called Improvisation by Nick Napier or something like that. I forget his name. Um, it's, it's okay. It's not bad. I, I just, you know, I, I'm not able to deep dive into it. And, and be honest, I think it's because the last several weeks we've all kind of been sick. So I haven't had any urge to sit down and study and kind of practice something, a new craft, apart from just actually attending these classes. So it's a, it's a little bit more difficult to read a book about it. Um, but I am enjoying, I am enjoying improv. If you ever get a chance to do improv, it's so much fun and, and it's supposed to be fun. One of the first things, and I think even the book and a lot of stuff that I've been reading is that it's basically playtime. And I think I'm in such a really good position to be taking improv because my three-year-old is all about playtime. He loves to play. And so this is kind of an extension of that, that world that I get to build with my son and just do it on my own with other adults. So it's, it's super fun. I really enjoy it. I'm meeting some really cool folks. On top of that, it's like super close to my apartment. So I get to go, um, not too far. And then, yeah, I think, uh, I'm enjoying it. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. What's also very timely is that um, serendipitous, I guess you can say, is when I began to look into these improv classes. I reached out to an old uh, college friend, and he uh, he actually ended up taking improv classes as well. He has his own troupe, um, and you know it's it's again very timely. Uh, I didn't expect it. It was just all coincidental. He moved back to, to the city and we just got together and we just chatted a little bit about, you know, what, what's been going on, including uh, improv. You know, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, again, if you ever get a chance to do it, go for it. The last segment here is called Revisiting MCU. Now, if you're not familiar with MCU, that's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, with uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, 
I mean, if you haven't heard about it, and it's okay if you haven't, you know, no one's perfect. Uh, but it's basically the, uh, those comic book movies, you know, like the Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, and all those, all those, all those dudes. So I only bring this up because I've been getting really, I, it all kind of started with like YouTube clips. I've been getting really into, uh, clips of, uh, and, uh, Infinity War, and it's such an amazing movie. Um, I, 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 it was, I started watching clips of when they were on Titan, when they were battling uh, Thanos, and then uh, and then the snap. So and I was like, why, why am I watching this? Might as well just watch the entire movie. So I started watching Infinity War, and then um, and then after that, I watched Endgame. And Endgame, I, you know, I'm a little torn about which which two films is my favorite. Uh, which of the two? I like them both a lot. I mean, I was in, um, I saw both of them opening day. I really love both of them. Uh, they're both phenomenal. On top of that, they, they did such a phenomenal job taking about like 15, what is it? 15, 17 movies or something like that. And then feeding them all into these two movies. It's the MCU did such an amazing job. You know, uh, I mean, they, they took about what, 12, 15 years to plan it all out and execute it. And so you have that emotional connection to these two movies that kind of like, um, the finale of the, of what's been happening, the saga. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I was very emotional. I, I mean, with the end game, forget it. I bowled. I bowled, you know, when, when, you know, people started dying off. And if you haven't watched it, you know, stop right now because I'm going to spoil it for you. All right. So like you had Black Widow die. That was a tearjerker. I was like, oh, that's going to be rough. And then, Forget about it. When when everyone came back in Endgame, when 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 uh, when Hulk snapped, uh, and everyone started, ooh, when everyone and everyone in the theater was going nuts. When uh, when the top three what was it Captain America, Hulk, and uh, and Iron Man, when they were going head to head with with Thanos. Oh my gosh, that was an amazing fight scene. And then. You have all the folks after the snap, including Black Panther, uh, Doctor Strange, Spider Man, all the folks that basically disappeared, all the Avengers that disappeared after the snap. That was that was a vibe. Oh my god! And I'm I'm so glad I was in the theater to experience it. And then you have Iron Man, Iron Man, Tony Stark making that ultimate sacrifice, <sighs> laying what is it, laying on the wire, whatever it's called. Yeah, I was uh. That was that was a good movie. That was a good movie. I bawled a lot. Uh, but then you know I started watching a little bit of the movies that came afterward, and I'm not as uh, as big of a fan. You know, I uh, I I'm actually watching the Marvels right now. I'm like 40 minutes in, 30 minutes in. Um, I'm past. I want to say the first act of the film, um, and I'm, I'm a little confused. You know, there's a lot of history that took place across these. There's three characters, right? You have uh, the young one, Miss Marvel, I think, then a lieutenant or something, a captain, uh, and then you have uh, Captain Marvel. All three of them have superpowers, but all three of them have origins that aren't directly explained. Um, that aren't like super well explained in the movie so far. You know, I, I don't know. I um I know they're tied to like the the, the wider universe, including like the shows. I know Miss Marvel has her show. The Captain something or rather has her show. Colonel something or rather has her show, and then Captain Marvel had her own movie. So it's really weird how they kind of tied those three story arcs into one single film, and, and that's kind of where it's losing me. You know, I don't really. I, I'm struggling to keep up. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I think it's actually pretty cool. There's a really neat fight scene where they're all kind of interchanging uh each other's position like they would snap in and out of the one position and just kind of keep continue the fight they were they were the preceding person was was in i thought that was a pretty cool uh scene the story arc is it's okay it's not like you know like super engaging but it's not bad i think a lot of people had issues with the film uh i don't know why people take this stuff too serious i'm like don't get me wrong I'm a f- fan. I'm a fan of of movies and how they're structured and the pacing and the script and the writing and the character depth. I I absolutely I absolutely adore that stuff. Um, but I'm not going to take it personal. I'm not going to feel personally slighted if a movie is bad. I have other stuff to worry about. <laughs> but you know, I, I think I think with this and uh the Star Wars um the Star Wars sequel trilogy a lot of folks took it take it too serious chill chill folks all right i get it you like the films it's all right 
but you got to relax. You know, we were in, we were watching, uh, my wife and I were watching the, uh, the third film. I really forgot. Uh, Rise of Skywalker or something like that. The third film in the sequel trilogy. Uh, and the Star Wars sequel trilogy. And, uh, my wife and I, I mean, I was bored. I mean, I, I wasn't, not because it was my wife, because the film was not all that great. You know, the film was like, you can tell it's, it wasn't the best film out there. And I took it as is. I was like, whatever. I have popcorn. I have my wife. I have, uh, I like to eat popcorn with nacho cheese. It's pretty good. Give it a shot. But there were folks in front of us. They were a little younger dudes and they kept laughing at every single thing they found ridiculous. It was annoying. And then one of the guys just walked away and this dude, the, the guy that was left over, he was just whatever about it. He, he was, he was not <laughs> laughing or anything like that. And then the other guy came back and they just started ripping it again. And I think, I think a part of it is like, it depends on the company you keep, you know, if you don't like it, it's fine. It's whatever, but just don't take it personal and, and really just ease up. Now with the Marvel's movie is, it was, it was, it's okay. It's all right. It's not terrible. Uh, and we'll see. I'm, I, I still have like an hour and a half left into it. So I'll probably pick it up this weekend. You know, and beyond that, I mean, we've just been, all of us have been working, kind of taking a, t- trying to take it easy. Uh, our son is growing. Uh, and that's a lot of fun. It's actually looking a little bit nicer out, which is really weird because it's February and, you, you know, I imagine it'd be a little bit colder, uh, but it's not too bad. I'm enjoying the change of weather. Um, we've been going off for walks the last couple of days. Um, on top of like my, my reading material, uh, I haven't, you know, I've been trying to read new stuff. I think the last episode, I was really proud of the last episode. I invested a lot of time into that. Uh, so you, if you haven't heard it, please, please take a read, uh, or a listen, I should say. Uh, I really enjoy it. I'm still trying the kind of like the exercise for out of body experiences. And now I'm trying to do like, um, self hypnosis, which is, um, which is all right. It's, it's not bad. Um, and that's just kind of like, I think, meditation for me it reminds me of a lot of meditation practices um and then you know what i what i did end up reading after that book was another book called uh spirit talker indigenous stories and teachings from oh, i can't even pronounce this from a micamac psychic medium by sean leonard i don't know um i got halfway through it and i really did not think it was there were some parts that I, I've heard of that I really enjoyed about like the, the out of body experiences, uh, talking to spirits and all that stuff. I've heard, of, I've heard some of that stuff. Um, but I felt like the book itself was really, really, I don't know. It was just, it was a, it was too much of kind of a pat on his back. Um, kind of, I think it was a promotional sell. That's, that's really what I think it is. Cause the guy, Sean Leonard, I think runs his own, like, I think his own media business, uh, if not his own channel or something like that. Um, so I, I, I kind of feel like this was a way to come on him, you know, get more business out of, out of folks. And it's an easy read. I'm not going to lie. The, the pages, the chapters are like two pages, you know, long. So it, it's a very easy read, but I, I kind of got bored of it after a while. Um, on top of that, I have a whole, a stack of library books, uh, sitting behind me right now. I'm reading, uh, a book. I don't, even, I don't even know what it's called. Uh, it's a sci-fi book, about 90 book, 90 pages long. Again, super easy read. Uh, I'll probably, I'm hopefully I get through it. Then I have a couple of like self help books. Uh, stressful is in some of them, something about dealing with stress and, um, and a couple more. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Right now, I'm just trying to get better. Uh, this darn cough. Um, and then just trying to, you know, relax and enjoy, uh, family time as much as possible. Um, I think, I think that's all I want to cover off today. You know, thank you for joining with me. I know, uh, we talked not too long ago. I'm going to keep trying to, to chat about certain things and hopefully the next time we, we talk, I can talk in depth about either a movie or a book or a show. Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, shows. So, you know, it's funny, like, I'll make this very short. As far as shows go, I have, you know, I, I, a couple episodes ago, I talked about uh, The Sopranos. I've been watching the clips, right? And now I'm doing the same darn thing with uh, The Wire, I'm not sure if anyone's watched The Wire, but if you haven't, you know, you know, give it a shot. It's it's one of the it's it's proclaimed one of the best shows ever written. I was a little doubtful of it, so I watched it, and after I watched it, I was like, it was good. I'm not gonna lie, it was good. Uh, but I don't want to say if it was like the best show ever. But what's interesting now is that I've began to watch the YouTube clips, and depending on the channel you watch, it's they off the the channel consolidates some of the 
related scenes so that you're, you're not getting like in between scenes that aren't relevant to the storyline. Uh, so it's a little bit more direct. Uh, and in the wire, in, at any given point, I think you have maybe two or three storylines going per episode and it's great. You know, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's, I, again, it, I don't want to say it's not, it's not badly written. It's, pretty good uh and the acting is pretty good as well but it, it was just clogging up kind of what i was really into so watching the youtube clips really expedited kind of the experience for example one thing i will say that i really enjoy is i i enjoy watching like the hood clips like when folks are on the streets and you know doing doing their thing um and i i don't really as much enjoy all the conversations that are happening in the law, in the like a lawyer's office and court and the precinct. I just, I really, I really, I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it's just me. I don't know, but I really do enjoy like watching the, watching like folks on the street kind of like, like the hoods and the drug dealers kind of interact. So this gave me an opportunity to kind of really watch their relationships. And one thing I've noticed and I started appreciating more is the, the acting. The acting is really darn good. Um, and I say that. Not because I'm a, like a professional actor or a critic, but I, from what I've read is that The Wire, they found most of the actors from the Baltimore area, meaning most of the actors are, are actually not, you know, they're really young. A lot of the actors are super young. Uh, I think a bulk of the actors are probably under 20, approximately 20. And the other actors, the older actors are a little more seasoned, but it's, it's pretty, pretty darn good acting. As far as the writing goes, it's, 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 it's great. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's pretty darn good. So for example, um, there were, when I watched the entire show through, there were a lot of scenes that took place on like corners. Cause a lot of the, a lot of the show is about drug dealing. So it's about corners and, I, I watched it and I was like, okay, that's interesting. Folks would fight over corners. They would leave. Uh, folks would come through and they would leave and then, you know, fight, blah, 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 whatever. So that's how I perceived it uh, prior to me jumping on YouTube. And then as I began to watch YouTube clips that kind of cut out the, the, some of the, I would say the fluff that I didn't enjoy and it got straight to the, to the story arc. It, it really build out the, the tension and build out the, I guess, the motivation and the story behind uh, a specific corner. For example, Avon Barksdale, he is the, the kingpin, uh, the drug kingpin, uh, in the first, eh, first season. And after he goes away, uh, a combating drug ping, kingpin, uh, services. His name is Marlo, Marlo Stanfield. And so the goal of, I guess, drug dealers is to find the best area, real estate, make sure that you can, you can sell to the, the, the widest audience or something like that. Business, econ, econ 101. Um, so with that, what ends up happening is once Avon gets out, he goes to war with, uh, with Marlo Stanfield for certain corners and, in this one channel I found, I thought they did it beautifully where they basically follow the entire story arc, the, the, the war between those two and on these specific corners. Now, if, if I hadn't watched this YouTube, I guess, collection or series, I, I wouldn't have known that the corner they were fighting for was just a single corner. I really, when I was watching this show, I thought it was multiple corners. So by when, when I watched the, the series here, um, it really painted a, an amazing picture of how much they actually uh, fought over a specific corner. On top of that, it also made me appreciate the cinematography. Now, when I, when I say that is when, when you're watching a specific show, oftentimes it's... I don't want to say two dimensional physically, but it, it is almost two dimensional because it's a set and you only get one view. What really made me appreciate the show more is the, the, the series began to highlight different parts of the block. So like you had one corner, um, that where the drug dealers hung out. And then in the next episode, they would take that, they would take the show and focus in on another corner or another part of the block. So it made me think I was looking at several blocks. Now that's not a, that's not a story. It's not a, like a, a jab at their story writing or their, um, uh, filming. It's just how I process information. I wasn't able to gather that information, uh, or make sense of it until I watched kind of these YouTube clips. On top of that, you had a ton, you have a ton of great characters. Again, if you haven't watched The Wire, 
do yourself a favor, watch The Wire at least once through, and then enjoy YouTube clips. Uh, you have a lot of great characters, including Omar Little, uh, Avon Barksdale. You got Slim Charles. Slim, Slim is so freaking cool. Prop Joe, Bodie. Oof, I'm not going to lie. Bodie, he is a soldier, like in all senses of the word. Like he is a soldier. Like he, he from the start of the series up until, spoilers, spoilers, until his death, he he stood his ground. He he was part of the game. Like oh my gosh, from like he, he embraced it, and like it sounds silly, right, to talk about folks like this. But you know, the reality of the situation is that a lot of folks live this, um, and I think it was very raw. Like this show is very raw. Um, they have, even have an entire season dedicated to the children uh, that live in the like the uh, in the impoverished areas of Baltimore, um, and that, that's a pretty good season because uh, it's so sad. It's so sad. You see, like like five, six young boys, maybe like eleven or twelve, maybe younger, and they're kind of going through it. You know, going through the motions. Like life is life is life is life, right? Um, in Baltimore, and even if and and what what ends up happening is. These folks get thrust into what the real world is around them. Some folks uh, end up turning to the life of crime, being basically stick them up folks. Uh, uh, another guy, he was called a snitch um, and, and basically ostracized by the entire community. Another guy, he became a drug addict, which is so sad because he was one of the nicest of the, of the kids. And what's ar- ironic is, is one of the jerks, one of the bullies, the son of uh, of a major soldier in the Avon Barksdale uh, criminal organization. One of uh, one of one of the, one of the sons is, um, you know, he's so hard, and he can be like all about I'm hood. I'm gonna be a soldier. I'm gonna be a dealer when I grow up, like my like my daddy. And he ends up turning a crazy leaf. You know, he ends up being adopted by a former um, police officer sergeant or something like that. And he, he basically becomes very studious. It's all phenomenal. I mean, I can go on and on and on, but the show just touches so much. It touches the newspaper and the media. It touches shipping. It touches the streets. It touches um, stuff that's happening in jail and precincts and limitations. And, and it's just, it's insane. Do yourself a favor. If you have not watched it, go ahead and watch it. I, uh, I'll leave it at that. I think that was more than a few minutes. I appreciate your time. Uh, if anything, uh, I hopefully be back on there in a couple of weeks talking about more stuff. Oh, we'll see. Uh, in any case, have a wonderful time. Uh, talk soon. Take care.